Today's instructional objectives, students will be able to identify landscape regions. Hmm. Old claim. Do now says, if you could live anywhere in the world, where would it be? And what kinds of natural disasters would the location expose you to? Be sure to include your name for credit. So today we're going to talk a little bit about landscape regions. And then you're going to begin work on lab number 16, which is uh, landscapes. All right, friends. So let's take a look at what some people posted. Actually, it would probably help if I shared my screen. Uh, South Carolina or somewhere down in the south, then you have to worry about hurricanes or tornadoes. That sounds like fun. Um, what else have we got? Los Angeles, but I would have to deal with the heat of forest fires. I would love to live in Costa Rica. The natural disasters are flooding and hurricanes. <clears throat> That's cool, uh, Christina. I would want to live in the Caribbean, but the high heat and high precipitation would be a problem. Yeah, you know what? I don't even really mind the heat that much. It's just the rain. Dubai. Dubai, low risk for natural disasters, but I would have to worry about sandstorms. Uh, Japan, yeah, Japan's got a few. Florida, but then I would have to deal with rain. I'd also have to deal with Florida. Another person for Dubai. London. Very cool, guys. All right. So characteristics of a landscape. So uh, landscapes, basically what it really comes down to is the slope of the land. How sloped is it? Um, the elevation. So how high up it is uh, or how down low it is. And drainage patterns and things like bedrock type. Yeah, so this is a place close to home um, because this is home. Uh, so we live in the Atlantic Coastal Plain. We do have things that we have to worry about here in New York, particularly flooding. Um, and we also do have things like hurricanes, et cetera. But because of the low elevation, most of Canarsie is between 30 and 40 feet above sea level. That means that if sea level goes up by 30 or 40 feet, we'll be underwater. You know, it really puts a uh, climate change in perspective if we start talking about the raise in sea level. Now, here's the Atlantic Coastal Plain. Not sure why on this image uh, Long Island's not part of it, but we are. And here, I want you to admire the beauty that is the Atlantic Coastal Plain. Nebraska, this is a Great Plains. Very, very boring. Now, to something with a little bit more spice, we have plateaus. Ms. G? And really, those are the three key points. Steep slopes, high elevation, and most importantly, horizontal sedimentary rocks. Mountains, on the other hand, are not sedimentary. Mountains are metamorphic, and that's really how you can tell the difference between the two. Now, can anybody identify this place, just from the look of it? Yeah, look at that. So um, Grand Canyon is a plateau. Steep slopes, flat tops, horizontal sedimentary bedrock. Now, actually, more specifically, it is known as a dissected plateau. It's a plateau that got cut in half, or got cut into pieces. Um, and again, that was cut by the Colorado River. Now, a lot of times we might think of these areas as mountains because they're high elevation, but it's really the sedimentary bedrock that gives it away. Now, 
Another example of plateaus pretending that there are mountains are the Catskills. In fact, if you drive to upstate New York, a lot of times you'll see signs that say Catskill Mountains this way. But they're not mountains. They're horizontal sedimentary bedrock. If it's horizontal rock and it's got a flat top on it, it's a plateau. High elevation, steep gradient, non-sedimentary, faults, folds, tilts. Classic example, Mount Evans. Um, here I went on a trip to the base of Mount Marcy. Actually, I climbed, climbed Mount Marcy, but just use one picture. You can see lots of metamorphic rocks. So it's not that round, horizontal, sedimentary. It's large boulders and cobbles. And I'd like you to take a moment, and in your own way, draw out what you think a plateau should look like, and draw out what a mountain should look like. It doesn't have to be 3D. 2D is perfectly fine, but illustrate. Cool. Oh, wow. Whoever drew this one, I like that. Very nice. Mountains, and that looks like a chair. <laughs> oh, I'm not chairing it right there. This one, mountains and a plateau. Plateau, mountains. Plateau, mountains. Beautiful. Hey, Miss G. Cool. Wow. This person's getting very artistic. It doesn't have a flat top, does it? Might be the flat top. I'm not sure. Looks like what? <laughs> like a melting giraffe? <laughs> okay. Beautiful, guys. I don't know what this person's doing, but everybody else did a great job. <laughs> All right. So that's it for the notes for today. Now, um, you can access those notes here. I posted them in the Google Classroom. You could find them under New Material 225 2021 Introduction to Landscapes. But uh, now we're going to jump into lab number 16, Landscape Identification. Please use your reference table uh, and your understanding of Earth Science to complete lab 16. So you're going to click through on this. I'm going to make a copy of it just so I don't write all over the original. And that's the one I'm going to do the editing on. All right. Still loading. Okay. So lightly shade each of the landscape regions shown in your reference table. Complete the chart below to show color, the color key and explain the major characteristics and formation of each region. Then complete the questions on page three. So I know highlighting can be kind of annoying uh, on slides. So I decided to highlight the areas for you. You'll just mark off what color they are. You do have some questions here. And then you have reference table page three, which you're going to have to cross reference. Let's do the first one together. I'm going to pick a random landscape region. I'm going to start off with looking at the Adirondack Mountains. So, landscape region. What color are they? Well, I have them here as a blue. Considering we have two blues on here, I'm going to call this one dark blue. And then, characteristic rock type, age, and formation. Well, they're mountains, I know that for sure, but what else do I know about them? 
Now you'll see over here on the left hand side, I have page three of the reference table. If I click on that, you'll notice that an overlay is matched up. So this section and this section are the same. See where it says Lake Ontario? See where it says Lake Ontario? They're in the same spot. So all you gotta do is flip between these two slides. So what kind of rocks are the Adirondacks made of? Now you could go back to the notes and look that mountains are made of non-sedimentary rock, okay? But let's be more specific. Let's go back to page three on our reference table. And you'll notice we have all these squiggles in the area and we have these things that look like sprinkles. Squiggles and sprinkles. Let's go to the bottom. Squiggles, sprinkles. So it's the last two on this chart. And when did they form? They formed during the middle Proterozoic period. And they contain things like gneiss, quartzite, marble. These are all metamorphic rocks. So you see, reading this last part of the chart, in fact, I'll throw down a little area there to highlight it to show what I'm really referring to. So I know it's from the middle Proterozoic and it contains metamorphic rocks. So I'm going to come back over to here, rock type, metamorphic, age, middle, Proterozoic, if I'm spelling that right. Um, and the formation, rock type, age, and formation. I'm not sure what they mean with that for formation. It might apply to the other ones. Uh, landscape type, is that a plateau, plain, or a mountain? These are mountains. Simple enough. I want to do one more with you. Let's do the one that's always uh, always pretending to be something that it's not, the Catskills. So the Catskills, I guess I would call that purple, light pink. I don't know. But um, so let's jump back to the chart and type in Catskill, color, pink, characteristics. So what do we know about the cat skills? So I'm gonna hop back to this page right here, and you can see this section matches up with this section. So the cat skills are these little dots. So the little dots are from what time period? It looks like they're from the Devonian time period. So I'm just gonna change the color. So the Devonian time period contained limestone, shale, sandstone, and conglomerate, which are sedimentary rocks. So we're going to go over here and we're going to type in rock type, sedimentary, and what time period? This was from the Devonian. I'm pretty sure that was it. Devonian, right? Yes, Devonian. And what type of rocks are there? What type of landscape? Is it a plateau, plains, or a mountain? Well, it is a plateau. How do I know? There's two ways. You can see how this says Appalachian Plateau, Allegheny Plateau. You can see the only solid line you have is this one. So since it's trapped within that solid line, this is all a plateau. This line with dashes in it, is the state boundary. This is the New York, Pennsylvania state boundary. This dotted line right here is just the area that we call the Catskills. Catskills are not mountains. They are plateaus. So we're gonna head up to here. We're gonna type in plateau. I hope this was helpful. Um, you'll notice that we have one, two, three, uh, questions. Question two and two A does require our use of reference table page three. So please uh, take a look at that to answer those questions. Um, but that is it. This assignment is due by tomorrow at four o'clock. All right. You have that posted right there. 
Tomorrow we're going to have a short meet. We're going to meet just to review yesterday's quiz. Um, and then I will be here to assist you with completion of lab 16. Time now is 1025. Um, you have until about 1050. 1051 is when the next period starts. So take the next 25 minutes, go through these, try and get a couple of these done, and then we'll try and wrap these things up tomorrow. All right. If you have any questions, myself and Miss G will be hanging out here for the next 20.